Hello, welcome to this week's edition of the Turning Point Podcast. Uh, today, we had a, a very interesting uh, conversation with Maya Starhawk. Um, I really appreciated her wisdom and some of her more shamanic uh, background. I like that she brought her Native American experience into the mix and uh, just an, a different angle um, to the, the spiritual conversation. And I thought there was there was a lot of insight and a lot of wisdom coming from her. She is a wise woman. I don't think we mentioned on the podcast um, how we met. Um, I went on a trip to Sedona a few years ago, and she was like a guide, like a hired guide. We hired her to show us the vortexes and kind of the the mystical aspects. Even though I had been to Sedona before, it was just, I loved her. She was referred by my friend Sarah. Anyways, we just clicked like this, and we yeah. felt like sisters right away. And so, and then we'd been trying to connect. Like, I haven't seen her since. This is probably two root, I no. COVID, you lose, it's four years ago now. <laughs> you lose two years. Um, so yeah, so anyways, Maya Starhawk is a, has a special link to the world um, inspired by teachings of the Peruvian and Native American shamans. She's a master of the ancient art of reading the soul, bringing to the surface its deepest meaning and infinite connection to the cosmic journey. So if you want to connect with Maya, her she's not she's kind of pulled back from the world right now. I've got, I'm linking her her, her email below uh, and her website, but she kind of not she took her website down and she's sort of not inspired. At least when we spoke with her, um, she wasn't inspired to have a website right now. But you can email her if you're drawn to her, want to find out more, or work with her. Um, you know, there's some people that just kind of want to stay a little bit more out of the limelight. I had to even convince her to do the, <laughs> to do the podcast. So, um, yeah, enjoy our conversation to this, this wise, wise woman. Please do. Hello, Maya. Welcome to our podcast. Well, hi, Corinne. And hi, Sean. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you. So we're going to jump right into our podcast question that we love to ask. Uh, so many seekers can recall that point in time when their um, childhood conditioning or their what they were taught as children never, never um, just didn't stick anymore, didn't, uh, didn't resonate with them anymore. So do you recall when you became a seeker? Well, as a child, I was always um, against the grain. And, and, and with my parents, I was always a person that just went against what they would say. So I've always been that way. Um, I was an outdoors person, always in trees doing things. Um, I went to Catholic school, so Catholic school was really tough, you know, and I never believed in what they were telling me. So I was always that anti, you know. So my parents always thought that there was something wrong with me, but in a sense, I just couldn't conform. That's just how it was. But I felt like watching how my parents, you know, being together for 55 years, loved each other, you know, just, it was a great thing. It's what I wanted. And I said, okay, I want that, but mm, be careful what you wish for, because <laughs> that was tough, you know? So another great awakening would be um, during a marriage and then a divorce was another part of a turning point in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to hear about those for sure. I just have a question about your childhood then. So I guess you're, since your parents sent you to Catholic school, that was their belief system? Yes. So the yeah. whole thing never sat right with you. And so do you think it was everything or do you think it was the fact that you weren't drawn to the church? It was just everything. You were just odd. Didn't well, it? because there was a lot of discipline and there's a lot of fear, you know, and their discipline with nuns was about hitting you with rulers. You know, the, it was a very fear-based um, school, and I didn't like that. So I always, thought, I always thought that the teachings that they gave us is that if you did something wrong, you were going to be killed. So I always thought that, you know, I was going to be struck by lightning because I pushed my brother down the stairs, you know, by accident or, you know, just stupid things, you know, being, or you say a lie and you're going to die because God's going to come and get you. Th those kind of things, you know, and I never could connect with that and the older nuns were a little bit more fiercer the younger nuns uh, were better but um no i i just couldn't i i really wanted out but it's what my parents wanted the education was good i can say that i had a great education so i can say one thing about the school and so how long did you did you stay in catholic school for your whole uh, six years Six years uh, through high school then? 
No, it was like from first to sixth grade. And then after that, I went into um, public school. My sister actually went in, um, she was in for 11 years. I call it being in, <laughs> in it <laughs> for 11 years. So, and my um, oldest brother actually got kicked out of um, school, Catholic school. So, so he was rebellious just as much as I was, but yeah. Well, I, I think it's interesting that you're calling your behavior rebellious when, you know, ultimately the, the core nature of the school that you're in is, you know, it's teaching fear, like you said. It's mm -hmm. funny how we, we kind of recognize now that, well, that's not necessarily the best way to learn and that's not necessarily the best way to be. It breeds a lot of trauma. And yet, be, because you were felt you felt like you shouldn't be in that environment, you were the rebellious one. I, I think that's kind of... It's interesting because you we are get we, we we have labels for people who just don't conform and they're rebels even though you know you're having insight about how to be and what what better way to be in life than what you're being taught and you know so you're labeled something. Absolutely, and and very interesting enough, I was the most popular in my class. You know, they always just voted me to do everything, the captain of the volleyball team or whatever, and I was just I just. I didn't really realize that I was popular, but that was what really happened. I mean, I'd be the one sneaking into the convent, you know, to try to see how they sleep, you know, with a friend or something, and that that would be me. To you see know, if they I, still had their habit on when they slept. <laughs> <laughs> or just to see what the room looked like, you know, they said, never go through that door, why? Don't tell me never, because <laughs> that's a doorway in for me. You know, I'm very, very curious and I always wanted to see but that got me in trouble quite a bit. <laughs> and so, then, and then um, no, it's OK. So so um, you had that. It sounds like you alluded to having that, you know, myth of, you know, uh, having a loving relationship being, um, you know, finding, you know, finding happiness in that. Right. So were you, do you, were you sort of in love with being in love or what, what, what was your thinking in finding a partner? A belief, yeah. an idea, you know, you see the way that we're raised, you see culture, you see how, it, how you're supposed to be, how a woman's supposed to be and how a man's supposed to be and what you're supposed to have children, that whole plan and, um, I kind of thought that's what it's supposed to be like, you know, I need, I wanted to, to do that, but that was just not a very good decision. That wasn't my path. And what I really learned was the, the partner that I actually picked was not a great person, you know, and there was a lot of um, verbal abuse and sometimes physical abuse. You know, and so you see the difference between, you know, what a patriarchal society is. It's a very dominant, you know, very dominant, dominant, you know, over women. And yet I knew, you know, being raised with a very aware mother and grandmother and great grandmother, you know, in that metaphysical type world, you know, I knew that things were different because when these times came in into my life, I would actually be visited, you know, by bats telling me, you know, things are really dark, or there would be a female uh, spirit that would come in and harass my husband at that time. Very interesting things would start to happen. So, <laughs> okay, we want to hear more about the bats. <laughs> uh, flying bats would come into my room. Literally, I would see them, and not just one, it would be a a mass of them and it was I was a vision yeah I mean it was well you can call it lucid you know very very lucid dreaming where they come in I always knew that there was darkness but I also knew there was a woman in that in that house that was actually protecting me too very interesting so there's yeah and it and she would never show herself to me but she would definitely show herself to him and always scare him <laughs> Always, yeah, very interesting. So, yeah. And how far into your marriage was that, and that you were getting these signs? Um, well, we were married for thirteen years, so I'd say pretty much halfway in that things started to really change. 
you know, because there was um, the more he wanted to control and I wouldn't allow to, him to control, then it, it got worse and worse. So, yeah. Now, did where, if you don't mind me asking, was that somewhat re reflecting of your, your parents' relationship? Was there definitely a male dominant role in your parents' relationship? And did you kind of mir mirror that in your marriage? Or was that something more of a societal thing that you kind of fell into that belief? More societal. My father, I mean, he was a great man. I mean, he really was. And my mother is wonderful. My father just, there was five of us. So his job was to go to work, come home. And my mother was the one that just raised the kids. You know, that's just how it was. But he was a very strong and strict man also you know there, that was there was fear you know and inflicted fear and they did have a lot of fear you know with him and because it was always because i said so yeah there was never an explanation never told never you were never taught so there was never that building up of who you are it's like well there's a kid you know okay hello, <laughs> I'm here, but no, it wasn't like that. Even though my father and I were super close because he felt that I was more like him, um, I didn't really get to really know my father until he retired. And then that's when he really got to know his kids, mm. you know, and then things changed. That's interesting because, you know, we've, we've definitely talked about, you know, kind of that, that masculine dominant dysfunction that we've had, you know, permeate our society you know, over the last, well, forever, really. And it, it's interesting because fear is the foundation of, of that, you know, trickle down to the next generation. You know, we call it strength. You know, that, that's how a lot of men would look at it as like, well, I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm strong because I'm dominant. And all the, the lessons that are, a lot of men are taught are from that fear, you know, and that's kind of resonant in the Catholic church. So it's interesting that until you break that pattern of fear, which feels like vulnerability, feels like weakness, um, it, when you're looking at it from that standpoint, you know, really, really is not, it's not a weakness. And so, um, yeah, we've, we've kind of dove into that in different, in other podcasts. So it's, it's interesting that, you know, you had this rebellion from the Catholic Church that preached fear, and yet there was this fear within your relationship that was trying to be dominant, trying to take over, you know, the relationship as a whole. Do you mind us asking what, me asking what your breaking point from that was what was the what was the moment where you had clarity that this was not going to work long term um, when it got to the point where he was actually threatening to take you know my child away from me you know ah. our, yeah so and also there was just other symbols that would come through direct symbols like for instance the um let's just say the stone off of my wedding ring came out i knew right then that was the end of it and i also knew that if i didn't leave i would die that's pretty much bottom line and i have to say it's it's not that this relationship was continuously physically abusive it was an abusive way verbally which can really knock you down and yes yeah, sometimes the physical part of it but i knew that I instinctively knew that if, if i didn't pull out that i would die i knew that very as a matter of fact that there was something that would snap inside of him that he would not have any control and again the only time these things happen is when i would always challenge him if i kept my mouth shut everything's mm -hmm. fine but as soon as i would challenge him and say no that's when things would, would start, you know, to act up, but I was a fighter, you know, I was not one that would be submissive, you know, and so I was a fighter. So things change. And as he knew that he couldn't control is really when, you know, I pulled out, but I lost everything. He took it all. Mm. And I didn't care. He took the car, he took the furniture, he took it. I didn't care. Within a year, I had it all back. So I take what you want. <laughs> it does not matter, you know. But that's where everything really started, you know, the life where it really, I understood and I look at it as a blessing because I understand what darkness is. Mm. I understand what it feels like to be disempowered. And I needed to understand that. I needed to understand what belief systems can do to you, you know, and when you get hardwired into an idea that you're supposed to be, and this is what you endure, you know, this is what women, women endure. It's like, oh, hell no, mm -mm, changing that. And I... I know that. I mean, I know it dearly. And we talk to each other. 
we, I mean, we do see each other quite often. You know, we're friends. Interesting enough, we healed all that. And we have two great, wonderful grandchildren, you know, and, you know, I watch over him and he watches over me. But, you know, I'm strong. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing is, you know, then that's a mechanism of the ego, you know, if fear doesn't work, use more fear. And if that fear doesn't work, you know, use more fear. And, you know, right. it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, we've had so many people that, you know, in our society that have had to endure that much fear and come out of it. But it does, like you said, it is a blessing. It shows you, you know, what darkness is and it shows you what you know, not to live in. And it also it gives you an incredible amount of power. It's empowering to go through something like that. Um, and if you, you know, if you use that as a force, then, you know, moving through life, I think that can be an incredible, incredible experience. Unfortunate that it has to happen, but. It does, but you have to understand how it works. You yeah. so. So that delved me more into the darkness, you know, to understand and working with the shamans and understanding that part and the Native American, you know, culture, all of that was really having a, a really relationship and understand, you know, how it manipulates and what it does. You know, there was, they were zeroing into me. They knew who I was. So they wanted to make sure that they were going to dumb me down. Mm. So, you know, and I, I know that now. And I know the, the purpose, but it didn't work. <laughs> and that's the beauty, it didn't work. <laughs> so <laughs> this is where I am today. Okay, so walk us to the next step then. What, what, first of all, where do you think that strength came from? You know, all our strength is there within us. You have to have an events in your life in order to find that. And there was a day after this was over and I was in Half Moon Bay, California, standing over the Pacific Ocean. I said, enough of that noise. I mean, geez, I got married, forget it. <laughs> that was crazy. But I did, I contracted to myself. I said, I wanna know everything about myself from this point on mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. It's time for me. That day, it took four days and everything changed and it's been ongoing since then. So it's been quite a while. So let's say 30 years now. Ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. That's a big turning point. It's uh, phenomenal because I committed to me, which when you commit to yourself, then all the people come in your lives. I mean, it just every teacher, every person, and it was just like I was ready and I just went quickly and fast and boom, 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 and, and here it was. So it's pretty amazing. What would you say to people that, um, because I hear this probably more often than I would like to hear, but I hear it um, where, where women are like, when you focus on yourself, such as you just said, it's selfish. I have my stock answer for that. I'd love to hear your advice you give to people on I'm, that. I'm glad I am selfish. Well, <laughs> <laughs> <Hello? laughs> it's about me, huh? <laughs> well, oh, yeah. It's not about anybody else and what they want. It's about me, you know? It's about my growth and how I want things, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's like going through many ceremonies I've, I've gone through, man. I'm like, oh, woman, I'm patting myself on the back. Of it. Damn, you're good to show up like you do. You know? Yeah, I know. You know, I tell people, have an ego and tell yourself that you're damn good. You know, that you're powerful, that you're amazing. You don't need somebody to tell you that. You should know that within your heart and your body. You should know that. Say it. Say, okay. I'm a very strong, powerful woman in the knowingness of who I am. Not because I need anybody's validation. So <laughs> beautiful. I love that. Now it sounds like you've you've come to that place because you've you've learned how to validate yourself through struggle, through self-reflection, through introspection, through, like you said, uh, ceremonies that that have brought you to that. So can you tell us some of the ceremonies that have oh, shown that? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. It, it goes back to all my Native American ceremonies. It just, they are powerful. 
strong. Um, they don't play around and it's all spirit work and you better respect the earth and you better respect each other. I mean, it's very hard and strong work. So, you know, being in any kind of ceremony, you got to show up for yourself no matter how hard it is. Mm. You know, you really do. And I've done vision quests up on mountains, even when it's been raining and storming and lightning. You know, it's, I've done so many things in, the, in that realm. Uh, peyote ceremonies for my teacher too there, who so was sick with, you know, she had heart problems. So we went into ceremony and did peyote. Um, geez, that lasted for three days in the sense that even though I came out of it, boy, that pe peyote was in me for, you know, for a while. So, and it's not fun. Peyote is, is hard work and ceremony is very hard work when you do peyote. So I've done that. And then the jungle, I mean, I think I've done ayahuasca over 50 times not only in the jungle, but, you know, in other various areas. <laughs> and that has been um, amazing because I never lose myself in visions. I never give myself to the vision. Do you see what I mean? It's like they show me things, but I don't give myself to that. I'm watching it as a movie and I'm very clear with what I'm watching, you know, and I, I change the channel if I so choose. So, but they've taught me many, oh, those spirits taught me so many very, very important things. But the one thing that would, they would tell me something and they say, oh, okay, I get that. Well, why do you believe that? Just because I said that. Oh, okay, I get that. But yeah, but really? I mean, it was like the whole ceremony was telling me something and so I get that. No, why are you believing that? Just because I said that it was constant. Wow. I said, okay, I get it. I get it because it's all belief systems. It's all because of what somebody says, you believe it. Mm. I don't do that, you know, just because somebody tells me something, it's okay, that's great. But I wanna know, how do you get that information? Well, I got it from the book. Well, who read that, who wrote that book? Well, then and I go, well, where'd they get that information? You see, it's, it's just, you've got to know the information within yourself. That's more important to me. Make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. So yeah. can you, can you walk us through um, the next one you're like after that four, those four days looking out at the Pacific ocean in half moon Bay, um, you know, when the magic started to happen of the teachers that started to came, that uh, came to you. Yeah. I walked into a metaphysical store called Onisha. And as soon as I walked in, there was my beautiful native American music just playing in there. And I just sobbed. It was just time to go home. That's all I knew. You know, and from that point, the person that actually owned that store, uh, Maggie, Maggie Quinlan, I'll never forget that woman because she worked, we worked one-on-one -on -one for a year. She showed me so many little tricks and, um, and I worked hand in hand with Mark Dakota, who is a car, no, who is a acupuncturist that actually worked with the 49ers. Very spiritual, very highly evolved, uh, seer and everything, man. Those two hand in hand worked on me for a good year and got this body just to let go in so many different ways, but to open up channels. And so that just took me off. And, and the point is what Maggie would always say, she, was, she never met a person that can learn things so quickly and then, okay, more, 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 more. It's because I already knew, but I needed to get it going, get it rolling. And so I did so many different ceremonies, even with her, I even did the breath work was incredible, you know, tried that. So it's, it's like I tried everything to see where everything fit and how it felt in my life. And, and worked it. And it's always about consciousness, you know, expanding consciousness. So that was the beginning. And then from there, it just shot off into, again, the Native American um, traditions. And I had three teachers, which two bears was one of them. And um, you don't mess with two bears. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like saying, get over it. <laughs> We'd be crawling out of the lodge, get up, go eat, wash the dishes, get over it. <laughs> oh. Pretty much, you know, you know, you, she's trying to change your space and trying to get you back into a granted space. Um, and then Art Running Bear, Art Running Bear, I worked with him. We're good friends up to today. Um, 10 straight years with this man. And 
You know, Native Americans are not really of this planet. So they are just unbelievable spirits, very, very highly advanced beings. And he showed us things that um, we're experiencing now. We even talked about it. You know, we talked about the power of the spirit. Um, he was the one that actually opened my eyes to that darkness, you know? And again, when you say God, he goes, what God are you talking about? Because he goes, there are so many, so many spirits out there will say, I'll be your God. I'll be your God. I'll be God. It's just like, you have to know, you have to see, you have to be aware. You can't just say, oh, it's God. Well, what God are you talking to? I mean, seriously, because there's so many spirits, so many negative energies that will say, I'll be your God. Mm. You see what I mean? Yeah. It was very, very, very clear on that is that you have to be so aware of what is out there because they are game players and they're here. They're here on this planet and they know how to manipulate a person. So another thing would be like, never, never, never bring in the white light into your body. Well, there's so much white light out there. Well, I'll, I'll send you my, my light. I'll send you my light. But then who is that? So, but see, you are the light. So why would you need it? Mm -hmm. Why would you need anything to come into your body when you are it? You see what I mean? So he taught those to be very specific that you know this body and this spirit. And you don't have to bring things in just because people say, bring it in. If anything, out. Out. Because I already have it all here. So the point is, is accessing what you are. So that was, he was unbelievable. I think the one experience that I had that, that I knew that this man was super powerful is when I was in his home in um, Reno, Nevada, or close to Re Reno. And he said, okay, he had five of us that were in his very advanced you know, people with him. And, and he actually took us out of that room. I've never experienced anything so profound in my life where actually physically we moved, you know, and he, and it was such a, a feeling of just kind of spinning and this elevating us into this other reality was incredible. But he also, you know, it was, it's, it was very, very hard for him because he saw things so clearly and he would cry a lot because of the things that he would see just sitting on his doorstep and seeing people as they go by, he can feel and sense, you know, what goes on inside of them. And it's some days are really hard for him, but he was also in one of those uh, schools. He was taken out from his family and put in one of those schools. And that whole storyline is just another conversation altogether. But, you know, um, very, 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 very advanced. And the third person would be Linda. I don't want to say her last name because I want to protect her because she, again, another person not of this world. I've seen her walk over fire. I've seen her fire. And she would always say, no. It's not going to burn me. I've seen it. She's talked to me in languages that don't even exist on this planet. And yet when she would talk to me, I would know it. These things, you know, these are just very magical things that would happen in my life. So very profound. And so mm -hmm. what, ha what have those profound uh, teachings done for you on your journey? I mean, I'm sure it's much, but the first is what comes to mind to share. Awakening myself. Showing me who I am. Showing me the path. I mean, it, all of it, every single one of them in their teaching has showed me something very specifically different. If it didn't match, I would kick it out. I mean, it's, I was very specific and they knew that too. I mean, they, that's one thing about all three of them, they knew that. So um, that information was, is, and it's still ongoing because there's other information that comes through me consistently because we are now in another pivotal time on this planet. So my evolution of myself and the power of self um, has been um, more than I ever thought and imagined of who we are as human beings on this planet. So there was a purpose from 
coming in and being born into this world. You know, and I have, well, we'll just say a, a set of, and I don't say rules, but just say my instructions. So there's certain instructions that are inside of me. And as coming into this world, I feel like I've been protected the whole time, but had to have these direct experiences. And my instructions, time period, keep on opening up. Okay, and then knowing myself differently continuously, and it's an everyday process because you keep on waking up to something different, or your multi dimensional self, your consciousness all day is changing. And it was, it's sometimes it's a struggle for me to walk out and to drive because my consciousness is very different. So I have to be very careful of how I maneuver myself into this world because I see it, but. It's a world that's outside of me because my inner world is so profound and strong inside. Make sense? Yes. <laughs> well, it, it's it's funny because like what it sounds like one of the main components of of the teachings from from your you know few teachers were looking at your beliefs structures, figuring out where your belief structures were, you know, and, and one thing that kind of spoke, uh, as you were saying, it's like, why would you invite so many things in just because you, you were taught that you need to bring something in. And, and it, it's, it's interesting because it feels like a, a, it's a constant thing that keeps coming up with people is that we are taught that we are not all of that we are we are taught that we are small in in so many very subtle ways and and it's it's this these filters that get put in place these belief filters that you know kind of constrict the free flow and the the intuition that you know is innate within everybody and so it sounds like one of the main you know ingredients of the teachings were putting all of those beliefs in the fire over and over and over again and looking at them and then questioning them and then uh, dissolving yourself of those beliefs. And, and that's how you, that's been at least my experience of how you discover yourself. A and the more that unfolds, the more you look different even to yourself because you're not seeing yourself with those filters, with those beliefs in, in place. And it opens up, you know, like you're saying, more instructions, more work, more purpose, you know, that that feels divinely orchestrated or it feels like it comes from another space and you just invite that work into you know this reality perfectly said it, it to me it's more like dissolving or dismantling the slave self mm, nice hmm. dismantling the slave self beautiful because that self is the one that gives you all that information, you know, right, wrong, fear, insecurities, judgment, comparisons, you know, all of that. I mean, it's, it's, it's an actual design program in humanity. It's a very infiltrated into us from a very dark source that has been on this planet for a very, very, very long time. And so to go into this dismantling is really what's happening on the planet. Hmm. Make choices. You're going to be the slave self, or you're going to be the self. Which one you want to be, and you can see the choices that are being made. So I'm here to help that process. Right now, I do it um, without even having to say a word, because my frequency is already doing it with people. But there is going to be a point where I'm going to be out there and really making the change. So I already know that. So I already know that I'm being prepared for that. My endurance, my biology, everything's changing. Because when you dismantle something, that means you're actually building a, a, a new human, a human that's supposed to be here on this planet. That's us. Yeah. And it's, it is, it, uh, that's, that's what I <laughs> Very deeply. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, is, it is strange because the more you surrender to, and it's, it's, surrendering is the word that we use. This, this, is, this will be interesting, your perspective on this, because surrendering is the word we use. And yet, when you surrender, 
all of the things that you're not, it, it, you know yourself so much more purely that you feel more empowered. It's a weird paradox thing that, that seems to be where we say surrender yourself and it feels like you're dying in a lot of times where I'm sure you've been in you know, plenty of ceremonies where you felt like, I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this. And you know, this, the self-reflection, the introspection, the, the whittling away and putting all of those you know, false prophets of self in the fire, that feels like a surrender because you identify so strongly with those identities, those beliefs. But but you're you're really just burning away everything else. So surrendering all of that identity, all that belief, is one of the most empowering things, and it's why you can say, "I I know that I'm strong. I, I I'm glad I'm selfish because I've worked so much on myself and I've known myself so deeply that that I know where I am and I know where I stand. That's not selfish anymore because you've you've come into light. You've come into your own light." And that's the best thing you can do for yourself and other people. Absolutely. But the word surrender is, is a word that I personally would not use. And mm. the reason for that is because I don't want to surrender. I want to dismantle. Mm. I want to destroy. I want to dismantle what does not belong to us. That is not us. So if I'm surrendering, I'm just like, ah. But if I'm dismantling, I'm making sure it's not going to be here very clear it's a very it's a very clear because wording is has to be very very clear of what you're saying and what you mean in your life okay i want to make sure that everything within myself is being dismantled because to let go means it's going someplace else mm -hmm. no that is not what i want what i want is i want to destroy dismantle get rid of you cannot be here you do not belong here and I guarantee you that they're all going to be gone. <laughs> it's the end. And this yes. is what we're prepared for. And this <clears throat> is what we need to understand. And this is the change. And yes, it's been prophesied. Of course, all the indigenous people on the planet has prophesied this time. But we're advancing too quickly. And time and space continuum is just too fast right now that everything is just moving and it's because we're accelerating and so through that acceleration there is a great awakening happening right now so in essence you know we're waiting for the positive high frequency beings to come well hello who are you <laughs> and who am i we're already here yeah so it's really identifying to who you are and not wait for something because you are the change. You are making it. You are making it change on this planet because we're dismantling what no longer we want. It's been infiltrated. When I say infiltrated, it has an agenda, and it's very fierce. So we're going to stop it. <laughs> and the way it's going to stop is not going to be comfortable for all of us, but uh, it'll change. <laughs> You know, I did a video, I mean, I was at the Salt River and we have like 500 wild horses up here. And so, you know, I did this really short video and I said, boom, so you think you're going to control us? No, don't think so. You think you're going to be knocking at my door? No, don't think so. You think that you're going to create or you're trying to create these um, floods you know, all over the planet. That's not going to work. But you know what? Mother Nature is going to take you down. <laughs> so bye-bye. See you later. You know, because, you know, nature is alive and she's coming into full form right now. And let me tell you, she's going to do a lot of cleanup, which she has been doing. But there's just a lot of things that are going on the planet that has been um, forced, like those floods are done by specific people. But there's going to be a lot of other things that are going to be happening on the planet that is going to be Earth. And Earth is going to make her move too. So there's a lot of things. You know, they can try to enforce on us, but there's something else going on. So many things going on right now. Mm -hmm. I'm what's going on right now. <laughs> <laughs>
Gotta have she fun. <laughs> She's yeah. the force. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in British Columbia right now up in Canada and there's like 280 fires going on here right now. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. that's a, that's definitely. Yeah, I'm a, you know, Canada's gonna go home. So, you know, Canada, it's really time for them to step up because this is gonna get really hard for them. You know, I do a Zoom, you know, with, with certain people on Tuesdays and I got two people that live in Canada. So I keep very close to what's happening to them. And then there's another person that lives in UK. So I keep very close to, okay, what's going on, Hannah? You know, I want to know what's going on over there. So we can keep, you know, help each other through these times. And we really want to know because news is not telling you pretty much anything. So, yeah. No. Yeah. But we do have the power with the Zoom. And, you know, I mean, it's amazing the people that I know all over the world and can connect with. Yeah. all over the world yes and, and we wouldn't have done yeah. that had it not been absolutely a pandemic and you know people forced to we had the technology people just weren't using it absolutely and now we're using it oh i think it's amazing because that's where i do all my readings now you know it's always some video so i like it i think it's great because i like to see people i like that communication because when you're looking at somebody you're actually feeling them connecting with them you know loving them caring about them you know, you can feel their spirit. It's just like, it's fun. It's nice. <laughs> I love that you say that because there's so many people that don't think that they're like, oh, I can't feel them. I can't touch them. And I'm like, well, you can really, I mean, you can't physically yeah. touch them, but you can energetically. Absolutely. I mean, my, the yoga classes I teach, it's completely different doing them online. Yes. But it's mm -hmm. also completely different than doing, you know, yoga by themselves. They feel the difference when they're in the class with me on Zoom with different people from all parts of the world. And uh, it's still powerful. Absolutely. But what's happening in the changes is there's frequencies. So your frequency, and I think you've heard so much about that. The frequency is raising on the planet. Yes. But the frequency is raising inside of us. Okay. We're getting really amped. Now you can say that you've had those experiences or you can really identify with that. But my frequency is very, very high. And so by having this conversation with you, I'm actually touching your frequency, not doing anything to your frequency, but in essence, we're all raising up in frequencies together. Yeah. You know, so that's where we really need to focus on because when we concentrate, like if I'm really concentrating on Australia right now, so what am I doing, you know, helping that frequency to rise because it's not good, you know, same thing with England and same thing with Canada, you know, so we're high frequency beings, we can do that. Yeah, beautiful. I'm so glad you are talking about this because I really felt like during COVID, I was alone a lot, meditating a lot, and I really felt like I was like a grounding rod. And, um, and it, you know, I didn't want to take responsibility for, you know, what, but I just felt like I needed to do that. But for some reason I felt like a grounding rod and I've just been talking, let my language is turned to frequency. That's all I, I just, that's all it is these days for me is frequency. So right. can you talk a little bit more than about frequency and also how maybe your body has changed, like maybe with food, can you describe? Cause I've had some challenges with food. Yeah. You just can't, those foods you just it don't align anymore. Because when you're operating in a very high frequency and it's actually gold, you know, there's a very gold frequency. We have gold in our hearts, gold. I mean, really physical gold inside of us. And we're operating from that. So we cannot have foods that are dense. It, it, it will not, you just can't. I mean, I woke up one day, this was like 10 months ago and I would always have my occasional wine or beer with my girls or whatever. And I woke up and I just said, it's done. I mean, not that I planned it out, but it was done. And I never touched it again. Don't care about it. Can't even see it. Don't even want it anywhere around me. You know, same thing with foods. And same thing with just, you know, sustainability things. You're so conscious now of everything that you touch and what you're buying and what you're doing and what you're doing with what you're throwing away. Everything is, you're being more connected to this planet and to earth and to really preserve this earth and take care of it. 
So that, that's been really big. So frequencies have actually, um, you know, just hit me really hard in my body and had vibrations going, um, sleeping, not sleeping, being laid out on the couch because you can't even function because it's just, you know, it's just really deleting everything in there that doesn't belong. So in essence, it's kind of like those hardwired um, dense energies are now being, you know, taken out. So what happens to the body? It's like, oh my God, it's a lot to do. There's a lot that you have to change your whole life. That's why being home a lot is, is really nourishing and very, very good for you. Very, very good for you. So I, I'm not a person to do that because I'm always like, mm, got to go out, got to go into the river, got to go hiking, got to, you know, be out in nature. And when that's cut off and you can't do that, then, you know, there's a reason for that. And so I'm an acceptance of that, you know, okay. and saying, hey, this is what I need to do right now. And because I need to be different, my body needs to support this frequency going through my body. And if I have a weak body and I have this high frequency, it's not going to work. Hmm. it is not going to work you're going to struggle so you have to i mean it's it's not that you have to you're already getting the inner instructions it's already communicating to you you can sense it by what you see no, no can't do that so you have to pay attention because if you don't mm, not good <laughs> yeah i haven't been able to eat out at a restaurant like no. i've had i've eaten out at two restaurants in the last two yeah. years that's changed for me too. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All my own prepared fresh foods. I grow my own food. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, absolutely. Everything changes. So you're seeing differently. You're sensing differently. You know, there's communication that you're actually listening to your own, your own inner communication. As we were talking earlier, Sean, it's, it's the inner world it's a predominant world and that world you've got to listen to i call this home this is my home so i don't care where i lay my head i'm home this is my home base so i need to know me you know i need to understand me and i need to to say yay or nay or step aside you know i have no problem saying that too i'm very you know i'm i'm loving very loving and caring and again the love is the vibration of love on the planet is not what we know it to be. Okay, we know love, but we've known it's a very controlled word. Yeah. Isn't it? But love, now, it's not so much the feeling, it's just the knowing of love is the only way it can work. Love is saying no, love is step aside, love is being angry, love is being like, oh. <laughs> it's that love of self is like that expression is really the honoring of self in this planet yeah lo loving loving yourself i mean that that's been a big thing for me to you know uncover over the last you know decade or so is is mm -hmm. knowing how or what that looks like because right. because so so much of our understanding of love is based on conditions or based on performance or based on, you know, a trade, you know, there's so many things that we, we limit love to experiences when like what you're saying is th there's a lot of love in being honest and being open and being truthful to yourself and to others. And that's, that's something I think that is changing in the landscape too, is, you know, we're, and, and you, it, it's weird. There's this, there's the, the facade, the social facade, the structure of how it looks, and then there's these undercurrents is what it feels like to me is there's these undercurrents of very powerful truths that are holding up and holding space for, you know, the calamity because people are, are being shook uh, in ways that they didn't know that was possible if, if you've not been doing the work to discover yourself over, you know, however many years that you've had opportunity to do so. Right now, you're being forced into that, and people are not necessarily all that prepared for those experiences. And so, you know, I think people are learning self-love, but they're learning, they're they're learning how to love life and how to know what's important for themselves in life, and that's ultimately bringing them into a love of themselves as well. So it's, yeah, it's it's it is a it is a tricky time, and it's tricky to talk about because, um, I I feel like people are 
people talk about th- the current setting in a negative way as almost as to impose more negative on it. Like, oh, there's so much this going on. There's so much this. And yes, there are those things going on. But but I like in meditation, I've, I've been really trying to focus on the, the more raising of awareness that is happening, the more powerful and the potent things that are happening outside of the chaos, because that's what it feels like I've I've experienced over the last year is this empowering coming into my own, you know, knowledge of myself. And I, I like to project that out. It seems almost like misplaced optimism, but but it's not because I think there's an inevitable raising of consciousness and raising of awareness that is happening. Um, I think that's why I like your analogy of when you're looking at a frequency, you hold space for that frequency to rise. You don't impose your own will on that frequency, you hold space. And we've been, Corinne and I have been talking about that a lot and, you know, in people's lives is holding space for that which is needed to happen. And that doesn't always look comfortable, like you said, and it doesn't always feel comfortable to people that are in that experiences, but, you know, you got to rise. Exactly. The people that when you say the negative people and negative things are coming through, Let's keep focus that it's not the people. Mm, good point. Good point. It's what's in those people. Yeah. You know, and that's taken a really, uh, let's just say, depending on their DNA and how much they've been hybrided or, I mean, that goes into a whole, whole other storyline is how much that they're hooked in, you know, and so there's, it's something we need to be very focused on because we always have this thing about, you know, these people, yes, I know what they're doing. I know it's not right, but I also know what's in them that's Mm -hmm. doing it to them, but also know that, you know, how they were raised and what happened, you know, what environment they were in, what's all this darkness doing to these people. But there's also the light that comes through, through that darkness, no matter what experience. So it's, it's, it's just so much and so many different ways of experiencing this earth right now because there's so many different dynamics to it. But the negativity is coming out stronger and stronger is because it wants, it doesn't want to leave. Mm. It wants to hold on for dear life, but it's done. It's just plain, it's just kind of like paper tigers, you know, like a balloon that was all blown up and now it's just making all its noise. <laughs> well, that's what it's doing. But it's making very loud noises and it's going to try as much as it can. And so it's up to us. And that's what we're finding out. It's up to us to stand up and we will make that change. And, and because of these events where people are just kind of place it and not do anything, all of a sudden, boy, you're going to see them. I'm awake now. Boom. You know, and things will change. So we're just kind of waiting for that. But these talks, these podcasts, the communication, whatever we do, how many people it reaches out to, I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's incredible. You know, what, what you're doing, Corinne's doing, myself, it's just like, we're doing a work. And we're doing it just being in our home and not talking to anybody. We're doing it. And that's amazing. Yeah, because I do have, like, Sean's one of them. And I, I do have a couple of friends right now that, that are very sort of not wanting to be out in the world and wanting to even go further from society (laughs) and, uh, and people and, and, and that's, that's cool. I'm not, I'm not drawn to do that, but I'm, I'm one. Could you have a comment about that? Yeah, you can't hide. I don't care where you go. You can't hide the change. I mean, you have to step up. This is what it is. They're going to find you, you know, it's going to follow you regardless. You have to face it. It's a, it's a global event. <laughs> it's this planet. It's a whole big event right now. Yeah, no. And yeah, I think the people that are drawn to sort of move out more remotely, they can, do, it's the same thing that we're doing. Like we're doing the work from our own homes. They can still do the work from remotely from where they are. It's fine. Fi- yeah. Finding a place that's comfortable. I'm at a place where I've done or for whatever reason, I'm, I, I'm, I've been in incubation period for 10 years now. So I'm now ready to stand strong, whoever needs me, you know, whatever's needed. I'm, I'm here. I'm like, you know, good frequency, strong. 
and uh, doesn't really matter where I am. I don't, doesn't, doesn't bother me either way. Like you said, this is home and I can be anywhere, go anywhere and I'm, I'm good. But I feel like if some people are drawn to sort of be more in nature and, or be more secluded from society, um, if that's what they need for their frequency to look after them, that's cool. Well, it just depends on why they're doing it. Right. Mm. Are they, yeah, for sure. Are they doing it to run away or because they don't yeah. like people? Yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. And we're all in it together. So, yeah, there's people that can survive and be out there and know what the work that they're doing, but there's other people that do it out of fear. I mean, yeah. you can't walk away from it. I mean, I know that a lot of people are, are trying to do that, but, you know, we're in nature no matter where we're at. Even in the New York City with con the concrete jungle. Absolutely. Matter. No, I fully agree. And, and you are part of nature. So you got the calling no matter where it's at. But if the call, if nature's calling you to do something, then there's a purpose for that and go. Absolutely. Because I've been listening to it. Am I staying here? Am I going? Because I know the window is going to shut within the next couple of uh, months. That Boom, we're going to be in. So, and I've been waiting for that. I said, where am I going anywhere? I said, no, I'm not going anywhere. But though I know a lot of people that are getting that call and they're getting up and going and yet they don't know where they're going. <laughs> that sounds like me. That's hilarious. Is that, is that really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, um, and and that, I think this is, this is a great conversation or, you know, great point to make about it because uh, pretty much actually since I got back from Wellbeing Center about a month ago, a little over a month ago, uh, both my wife and I were just like, you know, she's not, she's definitely not necessarily tapped in, uh, to the same world that I am or where I seek, you know, guidance from. And b both of us are very much like, hold on, this place is not resonant for us. And we even, we, we built our own house, built a studio and, you know, we've created this infrastructure over the last few years. And, and even still, it's just like, there's this thing saying, you know, there's somewhere else to be. And it's, it's, you know, it's looking at all facets of it. It's looking at it. Are, are we running away? Are we taking an opportunity to, you know, make this what it was and then, you know, create a new version of that? Or what is it? And we're, we're trying to do the work to, you know, figure out why that call is happening. But it was, it was literally all of a sudden. And if you looked, if you knew more about our life and where I, you know, was, you'd be like, that seems insane that you would even consider going, you know, somewhere else after what we've been building and it is extremely stark and very real, you know, shift and movement towards something else. So we're just looking at it and looking at the options. It's it's interesting. That's the earth talking to you. Yeah. She's she's directing you where you need to be. That means your frequency. That means wherever you're at, wherever, what the earth is doing. I mean, it, it's very specific. When it's time to go, it's time to go. And then, you know, she is going to show you where you need to be. And yeah. that's what you need to be, you know, so there is a purpose within your own frequency. And so that's just what you do. And who knows where you're going to be placed because there's, there is something about you that there is a power within you and there's communication with you and there's a directness and there's a clarity within you and a clear head within you, you know, that it's time for you to speak up wherever you're going to be and however you need to do this. I mean, yeah. it, it's just what it is. You know, I've been put into a 45 plus community that don't, don't even know anything about spirituality. And I go, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, really? You know? And it's like, yeah. I mean, I did not. This is interesting. When I saw this place, the woman looked at my website, looked at me, and she says, you need to be here. I said, well, let me think about it. You know, it's a one bedroom. I've been like in 2000 square feet now to a one bedroom. And she goes, no, you're supposed to be here. And I go, well, still, let me just <laughs> give me 24 hours. And so I said, okay, you know, I'll take it. I said, give me the application. She wouldn't take an application. She just wanted to know my name. Wow. Never got any references from me. Huh. Yes, nothing. And I'm like, whoa, are you telling me I'm supposed to be here? Hell yeah. So here I am, you know, and helping a lot of these elderly people here too. A lot of people, there's a lot, a lot going on. Oh, that's so good. Are you still in Sedona? No, I left Sedona a couple of years ago. Sedona has just gotten too outrageously crowded and it's not the same anymore. You so know, where, where are you? I'm down in Mesa, 
by Phoenix in the Alps. Okay. Yeah, by Superstition Mountains and yeah, very close to the river. But Sedona has changed because of money, you know, and the Airbnbs and, you know, vacation rentals and they allowed that in. So it changed completely. So it's not what you think it is. And all my friends, actually, all the psychic people, they're all gone or they died pretty much. You know, I don't know anybody up there. I think I know a couple of people right now because they keep on leaving, leaving, leaving. So it's been pretty dramatic. I mean, from a house that was, I would say three years ago, $330,000 is now running for $775,000. Wow. So it's not affordable and they're having a hard time even um, hiring people into the restaurants because it's kind of, there's no place for these people to live. That's right. So it's changing. It's not the same anymore. So I'm actually down in this and it's a huge, it's like an island within itself. They call it an island, but it's 2,500 homes, three gates, you know, and it's, it's actually an island within itself that's not part of the city. It's a totally different community, which is very interesting. So, but it has all the pools and the fitness centers and all that, you know, but you're definitely in a community that um, you don't have to worry. You know, you're always, um, well, I'm not saying, I've seen a man kind of, I, I knew it was some kind of spirit coming through some kind of portal, but he was running and I'm going, how can this happen outside at, at midnight with this particular person and, and disappear into where? It was very interesting. <laughs> so it doesn't matter where you live I mean there are definitely things going on no matter where you're at no matter where you're at so there's a purpose for this place and and I think it's going to show itself very clearly yeah oh, I'm so glad you're there and helping the people there that's so yeah. wonderful to hear yeah yeah it's good oh very very good that's great yeah, I, it's, it's funny you said, because I've always thought that Canada was ahead of the game in so many ways. Um, I've, I've been in the States for a long time, but there, there are some things that Canada is ahead in the game, but there's also a big reckoning that, I can, that I've seen before coming here. And now that I'm here, I, I can feel it. Um, so I understand, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was I was a little bit confused by it, but now what you're saying definitely makes. Well, you know, the waters of uh, Canada is very important for the planet. Now just think of the pristine waters in Canada. And now think of all the Native Americans up there that have known this. Okay, those waters hold the records of, the, of this planet. And those waters are now flushing through our planet. So that communication is now coming out to us through the waters. And I think about that. <laughs> think about where water's going and what we're made up of water, water's frequency, water's communication, water's our earth. But Canada has always held the power and let's say the histories in the waters. Water is alive. So there's a lot going on up there. So that means that also these beings know that. So let's kind of control what we possibly can so those waters don't communicate. Let's keep those people, you know, dumbed down. It's, it's very, just think of what's going on, on this planet. This is just, look at it. It is quite amazing what is happening in each country. Italy just blew me away what's going on there, Jerusalem. I mean, it's the storylines between those two are just phenomenal. There's history about this planet. And let me tell you, we have had the most amazing experiences and past lives here, but we also have had those horrible experiences. I always, did you ever just wonder like the dark ages? I mean, who would give these people these ideas? to be so wicked. I always knew that. It's like, ah, oh, that's not us. There's something else going on on this planet and it got pretty fierce. But again, bye-bye. You guys are going. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> the end of the game is here now. So I, and I love that. I think we're ready for that. I'm prepared. I'm prepared for things, all structures to actually 
dismantle. That sounds good to me. Yeah, me too. I mean, you're prepared for it. You know it. Yeah, Sean, yeah. you're going to be moving. <laughs> where do you live? Or, by the way, where do you live right now? I'm up in Wisconsin. Okay. Okay. So we, I lived in Nashville for 12 years. That's how I met Corinne. And uh, uh, now I'm up in Wisconsin. Moved back about five years ago and, uh, you know, had some family stuff, held space for all that. And then, you know, we had our house built and, uh, you know, on a few acres up here. So we've, you know, had a little farmette. We're trying to do that. And yeah, we, it was great. I mean, this place was a retreat center for us, you know, during, you know, COVID last year. We, I mean, we've never been closer as a family, which has been, I have three kids. So, you know, we've never been closer in that regard. And we've had a lot of, you know, time together on this and cultivate this space that we've had. Um, so it was, it was somewhat of a, you know, a retreat for us that, that to feel like it might even be time to leave that is, is it's just, it's interesting. And it's something that's too powerful, you know, to, to look at, but, um, but yeah, I mean, we're just open at, and I feel I feel actually very fortunate to have had that over the last year because, you know, it started this podcast and this podcast has been incredibly powerful for me. Um, you know, talk about aware beings who, you know, see things when you look at them, you can see that they see things, you know, that's it's uh, it's been powerful for me to kind of, you know, come into my own you know understanding of myself and where my power lies and. And all that, so it it's, it seems exciting. That's what's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel that way, but it does. You know, your voice has a very, very strong vibration that comes through. I, I talked to Corinne about that. I said, "What a great voice he has!" Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, it, it's very specific. There's an actual frequency because I, I feel it every time you talk. I feel it coming to me. So, which means that there is a very there's power. There's a very powerful energy within you. The point is to believe in that mm. and to be that and to know that's what you're doing. Been working on it. <laughs> so Work on. See, that's the point. Who is working? The working is that slave self. You don't have to work on anything. You are. Mm. Bottom line. So once you understand, it's like you don't have to achieve anything. You are. So when you get rid of that other thought, then... Oh, yeah, I am. See the difference? I do. <laughs> I really do. That is that is very powerful. It resonates very well, deep. It's, just a, that it's very important people to own that. Yeah. We, we've just been taught something differently, not to, you know, to again have that, what we say, ego. You know, it's like, hell yeah, go for it. <laughs> who you are. I mean, it is. Your vibration, your frequency, what's coming out of this, your body, you're speaking from this powerful truth that you are. You don't hold anything back, do you? Not when I'm being honest, no. No, no. But you always also have other thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thought. That's the dissolving, you know. And, man, I, uh, well, I have had incredible. Dismantling. Dismantling, yeah. That's, that's the, that's, that's been it, man. That's been the the thing for a long time, you know, and I've been extremely fortunate and incredibly grateful for Corinne. You know, she's been a huge advocate for that in my life. And I've had her and, you know, some other very powerful, you know, women teachers in my life who have nurtured me through and were extremely patient, you know, through that process of uh, holding space for that vibration to come out. And, and even, you know, being invited onto this, this platform was, you know, huge for us and, and our friendship. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's something that is, it's at the forefront of my experience right now is, is this. And, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited to explore it more. Oh, it's a dynamic platform. Yeah. I feel it. It's very, very um, strong. Mm. Yeah. It's easy. And I, I love what's behind you because that actually radiates who you are too. You know, the, what is it behind you? Cause it's got a circle around you. It's yeah. like, it's like <laughs> mandala, the mandala. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really cool. I like thank that. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. But thank you, guys. I mean, uh, Corinne, you know, even with you in the work that you're doing in India, uh, that's just love. And knowing everything that you had to endure or go through, but it was still love was pushing it through. So again, your internal instructions were like going, boom, this is what you're doing. 
And that's what we're doing in each and yeah. every one of us. And Sean, again, you know, the movement and building something and walking away is like, well, we don't hold on to those things. We move on. You know, I've learned that I've always been moving, 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 moving on because I needed to with the work that I did. But I would come here and say, oh, please. <laughs> 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 and I would always would say, I'll never move into the desert. Boom. <laughs> just like a Pacific Ocean. Uh, so I have to be careful when I say never because I'm always put into places. I go, okay, I won't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of lessons. There's a lot of things, you know, the letting go and, and trusting yeah. intuition and listening. That's That's been a huge, you know, lesson over the, um, but in the last five, six years, it's just when it's time, listen and heed that guidance. Otherwise, shit gets sideways real quick if you yeah. don't listen. <laughs> yeah, and it's happening immediately. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You notice that? It's just immediate. You, have, you can't breathe. You know, that's another whole other storyline. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. To be continued on our next conversation. <laughs> yeah, we can go on and on. <laughs> we could. We could. Well, thank you for gracing us and, and sharing um, your divine presence and frequency. It's yeah. always so lovely to connect with you. No, yeah, it's been great. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I appreciate meeting you and uh, thank you for the powerful words. And maybe we need to check in in about six months and uh, do a recap and see <laughs> see what's coming to fruition since. Oh, I don't know. Six months, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be checking in in another week. <laughs> in another two weeks. I don't think so. <laughs> right. Going too fast. <laughs> we'll see, man. I'm excited for the ride. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. Thanks, Take care.